Now what we need to do is a general translation for this guy right here. Now we have users on this network also. It's a strange network. Everything is in one network here, the DMZ, the web server, and the PC. So the PC here is at 10.0.0.100, and he needs to get translated also when he crosses the router to the public address. And for this, we're going to do a NAT overload translation, which is the most common type of translation. And it's also going to be a port address translation. So to translate any computer on this network, right, any computer that has a 10 address, what we're going to have to do is first, we're going to have to set up an access list to define which private addresses are permitted. So we say, OK, perfect, access list. We'll say 10, okay, access list 10, permit the 10.0.0.0 network. And now we have to put in the wildcard bits or subnet mask. In this case, I'll use the wildcard bits, which is the inverse of the subnet mask. So 0.0.0.255. And that will permit the 10 network. Now, why did I do a um, slash 24 uh, wildcard bits inversed? Well, that's what it's defined here, slash 24, right? So it's a slash 24 network over here, slash 24. So there's my permit, my access list. And now all I have to do is say, okay, IP NAT inside source, and then I'll put a question mark. Instead of a static translation, we're going to use a list to specify the access list which describes the local addresses. Makes sense, right? So the list, access list, is list 10, right? And then I'll put another question mark and says, okay, well, we're going to use a pool of public addresses or just one address on an interface. Say, how about just an interface? So interface gigabit 0 slash 0. So everything from access list 10, or everything permitted in access list 10, will get permitted and translated to whatever IP address is on gigabit 0 slash 0. But that's a lot of addresses, potentially. So we're also going to put an overload and use ports, random port numbers, to identify the multiple private addresses going across the one public address. And that's it. So you need two commands to do essentially this, you need your, your access list and your IP NAT statement. And we've got it. We've got our access list permitting the 10 network. And we've got our IP NAT statement. And we also already have our IP NAT outside and IP NAT inside assigned to the interfaces. So we're all good. So now what that means is that when PC1 here wants to ping 192.168.1.100 ping 192.168.1.100 it works okay and it totally worked he could ping all the way over to here and if we look in the router I'll just do a control C show IP NAT translation, you'll see that there's a translation from 10.0.0.100 to the public address. Perfect. And it should work under any IP address here on the 10 network. So if I say 10.0.0, now I'm 166. Okay, so now I'm 166. It should still work go in there and I'll ping you see it still works and if we look at our show IP NAT translation you'll see that 166 is also being translated right so it's also being translated so notice the port numbers attached and also notice this if I'm the company router which I am there's my inside global address which is my public facing address Here's my inside local address, which is my private address of whoever is getting translated. And then the outside local and the outside global right now, these will all appear the same, whatever you can see on the other side. Right now we can see all the way 
to the 192.168.100, and so that's why it's listed as the outside local and outside global. Now, right now, this is still not a real-world scenario because I said that private addresses are not allowed to travel across the internet, and and right now, right, we're we're this 192.168.1.100 is getting routed here by the router, and it's going all the way across. So, in the real world, the router is going to translate. This router is going to translate it too. So this time we're going to do a dynamic address translation from this router. So now that we're going to configure this router for NAT, I'm going to switch these up here. Okay, so now that I'm now I'm in this router, so this is my inside global, and this is the inside local because now we're this router, and that's the outside global, and that's the outside local. So now I'm this router. So this time we're going to set up a public address pool and we're going to say, wait a minute, so this router has a bunch of IP addresses as 209.165.100.17 all the way to slash 24 on a slash 28 interface. So it has all of these addresses. Now right now the actual address that it has is 17. It only has one address configured, just 17. But this company, let's say your router, you own all of these public addresses. So to do this, we're going to set up a NAT pool. Okay, we've got a private LAN here of 192.168.1 network. So let's set up dynamic address translation on this router. So first of all, we'll go into the router, and it's going to be similar. It's going to be very, very similar. All right, here goes. It's going to be similar. Okay, first of all, Interface gigabit 0 slash 0 faces the WAN, so that's IP NAT outside. And interface gigabit 0 slash 1 faces the LAN, so that's IP NAT inside. Okay, now we're going to translate everybody on our private network to our public IP addresses, but a pool of public addresses. So we're going to need two things here. First, we're going to need an access list. Access dash list, we'll call it one. Permit the 192.168.1.0 network. And then we need wildcard bits, which is the inverse of a subnet mask. So if the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0, flip the bits and it becomes 000, 000 255. All right, there's our access list. Permitting the one network. Now we need a NAT pool for our public addresses. So we need to set up a NAT pool. This is something new. We haven't done this yet. So IP NAT and then a question mark and there you'll see it. Pool. And we'll walk you through it. Pool question mark. We have to give it a name. My pool. Let's put it in all caps. Question mark. And then what's the starting IP address? 209.165.100.17 and question mark and then the ending IP address 209.165.100.24 question mark oh net mask we got to do another thing all right net mask and then the net mask okay so that's going to be Interesting. We'll say the net mask on a slash 28. Let's see here. The net mask on a slash 28. So 255.255. Let me stretch this out. Dot 255.240 to get that to work. There we go. The NAT pool is done. We have our access list. We have our NAT pool. And now Look how easy this is. IP NAT inside source list one, because it's access list one, and then I'll put a question mark and then it says pool. Do you have a pool? We do have a pool. It's pool my pool question mark overload. We might as well overload it because we only have eight public addresses and we might have a hundred private addresses. So we'll have an overload on there too. All right, done. So now 
both routers are network address translating. So when PC0 communicates to, let's say, the Honeypot server, 209.165.100.29, it gets to the Honeypot server, but his address is translated at the router. So if you look at the router now, you'll see that he's being translated as well. Control C, show IP NAT translations. And you can see that he's being translated as well. 209.165.100.17 got translated with um, this port number, 1029, to this private address. So there it is, 192.168.1.100 on port 1029 was translated to 209.165.100.17 on port 1029. So there's the translation. And the outside local, all we see at the other end is the public address on the other end. And that's, what, that's what we see. So we can't see the out, other computers or the other networks outside local. All we see is their public-facing interface address which is whatever their public face is. And that's it. So that shows you the different types of translations. We did a static translation one-to-one. -one. We did a port address translation one-to-one -one on port 80 over here. We did a NAT overload translation, the most common type of translation on this router here, where we translated from the public address to the private network. And then over here we did, we did a dynamic address translation using a NAT pool where we have a pool of addresses. So we can pull these over here. Overload, NAT overload, port address translation. We did that over here. Port forwarding, we did that right here. Static translation, we did that right there. And over here, we did a pool of public addresses over here. This was dynamic translation. This whole activity will be put into a file and available on my website if you want to download it and play with it and do it. All right, thanks.